All right, everyone, there's a self-proclaimed conservative running in the state of Maryland for governor there named Richard Maddaleno, and he, uh, <laughs> he dropped one of the most funny political ads of the season. This is, you know, you've had all of the funniest ads are inadvertently so, and they're all from the Democratic Party. It's like, you need to hire better, more skilled people that can be spontaneous and witty, as opposed to using ads like this. It's like something from yeah, maybe the early Bush era or the late Clinton era looking at this ad. Uh, in this ad, Madaleno uh, insinuates that Trump is racist, he's sexist, he hates women, uh, and, and you know various things like that. And also then at the end, he says this, uh, apparently Madaleno is actually uh, gay. Uh, at the end of the ad, he's like, and what's the number one thing that pisses Trump off about me? And then he kisses his partner, who then looks at the camera with a shit-eating grin, like, uh, he looks like a deer caught in the headlights. This is just really kind of, kind of funny, his actual <laughs> physical appearance, but here's the thing. Uh, and I say this as someone who noted this quite some time ago. Donald Trump is in no way homophobic or against gay marriage or anything of that nature. He doesn't fucking care about the issue. I told people during the election, if you're trying to drum him up as a moralist conservative, like, you know, maybe a Santorum or something, you're barking up the wrong tree. Trump doesn't give a shit if you get an abortion. He doesn't give a shit if you get a gay marriage. He, he really doesn't care. He's all about money. He's a Manhattan businessman. He is not some, some uh, farm dweller from out in the, out in the sticks, uh, you know, pardon the pun, uh, who thumps the Bible all day. That's sort of the, the face of the old guard, like the Tea Party sort of Republicans, many of which melted back into the establishment, many of which <laughs> got purged by successive waves of uh, anti-Tea Party rhetoric from the party loyal. Uh, but Donald Trump is not your father's Republican. He's just not, he's not like a Rick Santorum. He's not like a Rush Limbaugh. He's not moralistic at all. This is why all the Glenn Becks didn't like him. This is why all, all of those people, you know, they were off the Trump train until very recently. Like, he puts Gorsuch on the court and they say, well, well you know, Glenn Beck sits there and pretends to pray to, to the Lord he doesn't believe in and talks about, well, maybe there's hope yet. You know, for a while he was basically declaring Donald Trump to be the Antichrist. Ted Cruz uh, talking about his New York values. You saw how well that went over. The Republican Party has fundamentally changed. You'll remember, if you think Donald Trump's homophobic, keep this in mind. Remember uh, when he was uh, giving his speech, accepting the nomination of the Republican Party? And the person right before him was an openly gay, a log cabin Republican who spoke. And he gets, you know, a standing ovation. And Trump comes out, what's the first thing he says? Oh, I think that's wonderful because, you know, years ago, that wouldn't have happened at the Republican Party. So I'm proud of you all. He doesn't give a fuck. He's not, he has no problem with you if you're gay. He doesn't give a shit. He just, and he asks that you be an American, then he can represent you. No, if you're, uh, you know, if you came here illegally, uh, he doesn't care if you're straight or gay. He also doesn't care about the color of your skin. He's just a law and order Manhattan associate. That's what Donald Trump boils down to. People act like he's some sort of backwoodsy person. It's like the funny, I can't think of anyone less backwoodsy than somebody who gilds his toilet in gold and talks about how Camp David, David is rustic. It doesn't make any sense, dude. Oh yeah, the White House is kind of a dump. It's not nearly as luxurious as what I'm used to, so thinks Trump to himself in his darkest hour. Why do they think that I spend more time at Mar-a-Lago, which is bigger and probably more expensive? The White House, you could probably buy the White House more easily than you could buy Mar-a-Lago. He, he, he spends all his time in urban areas, golfing, developing skyscrapers. Yes, total Bible thumper. Absolutely. No, W tried that shtick. You know, he, he also, a blue-blooded Connecticut native, he and his whole family, they pretend to be a bunch of gun-toting Texans in order to fool a bunch of people, and it was really funny. Trump doesn't try to fool anyone. He's like, yeah, I'm huge. I got billions of dollars. I live in a penthouse. Fuck you. That's basically how he rolls. Uh, Madaleno is, the rest of the ad might resonate, but the thing is this. This, this was poorly thought out, and I'll tell you why. If you're talking about, well, I defended Planned Parenthood, and I'm gay, and, and you know, I defeated the NRA on assault rifles, haha. That's really great for your core fan base if you're a progressive. If you're, if you're a progressive Democrat, yeah, that's what your, your core fans want to hear, but they were already going to vote for you. You don't need to target them with ads. You don't need to convince them of jack shit. What you need to do is go after people in the center. Now, I know Maryland is a heavily blue state. It'll probably win, in all honesty. 
But that doesn't mean that there isn't a center there that can't conglomerate with the right wing to defeat you if you've pissed them off. The progressives fundamentally are out of touch with the average, even liberal American. A lot of them, they may care about one of those social issues, but they're, at this point, I think a lot of them are like, well, we need to tone down all, the, all of these uh, moral wedge issues because number one, they don't always work. You know, it's hit or miss, so it's sort of a waste of time and money. And, you know, we're pragmatic. Number two, you know, we've already won on these issues. Who fucking cares? Like, uh, one big thing that they could fixate on really is the drug war. The problem is Trump is actually helping lead the charge against the drug war at this point. He sounds like a Democrat on marijuana. He's like, well, yeah, I don't do drugs. I never touch this stuff and I'm not going to use it. But yeah, medical marijuana is cool. I've got friends. He, he said before he even actively started campaigning, he's like, when they're asking, well, will you run? Will you run? You know, that time period, the stretch of for fucking years. During that period, he's like, well, yeah, I've got friends who used medical marijuana. He's not far right. You've got to get this. If you want to defeat Trump, hey, to note to the Democrats, you're never going to do it if you take up this banner of Trump is evil far right Nazi. That, that is beginning to dissipate. It's dissipating because the Mueller probe's got jack shit. It stops at Manafort. That's as high as it's probably going to go. Eventually, he has to end it anyway. His approval's ticking up purely due to the economy. And now the North Korean summit. You need a different strategy. You have to tr treat Trump with what, as what he is, which is, yes, certainly a fallible individual. A politician at this point has been in office for some time. But he's not a, a one-dimensional villain. You're not going to be able to maintain, I think, that particular line of attack because it's been so overused, it's becoming something that people are desensitized to. That's about all. Peace out.